So, good afternoon, everyone. I feel very guilty. I have no smartphone, I have no Facebook, I have no Twitter. Uh, I'm waiting for the day, maybe when the president asks us in the next quality review, how many tweets have you sent in the previous months? And we have to count that. Hopefully it will not happen. What I want to do is to report about uh, an online course delivery on European scale, and it is uh, an exercise to which I contribute uh, now for uh, 10 years. Uh, we have recently rephrased that. We call it the ITC Euromaster Course Pool. ITC stands for Information Technology and Construction. And of course, I will develop, let's say, a link to UCC's master program in information technology in architecture, engineering, and construction as a major contributor, but also as a major beneficiary of that scenario. So I have planned uh, this presentation uh, in a way that I will talk you through that uh, Euromaster framework. Uh, and since the conference title is uh, online delivery, I will uh, emphasize on the technology framework and maybe also a little bit uh, about the achievements and, of course, the learning and teaching scenarios we uh, support with the technology. Maybe we have time to talk about open problems as well. So what is the ITC Euromaster framework about? Uh, so 10 years ago, when I was a little younger with full hair and ambitious and passionate, uh, a few more people of my generation uh, understood with the Bologna it will be very hard to deliver a full master program in one university just with the own resources. And if you just take uh, the title information technology in across all of the fields of con construction, architecture, the different engineering disciplines, construction management, then we understood it might make sense that multiple institutions, maybe also across different nations in a open European market, join forces, and uh, that we collect the optimum expertise of the individual lecturers in these individual uh, academic institutions, uh, but that we bring our students together, the students form one team, and that we work maybe with one curriculum, and one of us takes over the responsibility to lecture a full class, uh, being responsible also for setting the assignments, setting the exams, and then in return you benefit from the contribution of another colleague. We were very ambitious and passionate in the beginning. We received European funding for three years. We developed one curriculum and we tried to get that accredited in different academic institutions in different countries. And to be honest, we fully failed. And therefore, we rephrased from ITC Euromaster program to ITC Euromaster course pool because uh, we learned a lesson that it is easier if we, so to say, cherry pick what fits into a curriculum in an individual institution. So no one has to take all of the whole 12 or 15 modules that we have originally developed. But if I have an interest to cherry pick five or six from the course pool, then I can do that. And the simple rule of thumb is that we don't have to go through huge bureaucratic procedures, IP agreements and collaboration agreements, is if one lecturer delivers at least one module to the pool, the academic institution can go to the extreme and take out all of the others. So the minimum requirement is deliver one, and then you have free access to the other, uh, let's say, modules. So what do we do in UCC? So we have a 19 credits uh, master program. Uh, we have so-called core modules and electives. And what you see on the right of that slide, you see that we, let's say, bring in lecturers from other countries. And whenever you see the European flag, then we have students from other institutions contributing in the classes delivered from Cork to other institutions or 
let's say, consumed by UCC, f delivered by another lecturers, but also with contributions from other institutions. So I lecture software engineering myself. Uh, Computer-mediated communication, uh, as shown, is one of the electives uh, delivered by colleagues uh, from a Slovenian uh, academic institution, the University of Ljubljana, knowledge management, uh, different university, University of Maribor. Um, in the, uh, let's say, summer semester, or as we call it, the second term, um, again, we continue with the software engineering project, the development project. Uh, I also deliver a class e-business in AEC. And then we, so to say, consume uh, a class with participants from the University of Maribor that is entitled Automation in Construction. So that's the framework, and you see uh, we just have our own classes in certain instances, and in other instances we benefit from uh, the contributions of other institutions. In a nutshell, if you see the yellow stars, uh, we have uh, students sitting in Maribor, in Cork, and at Dublin Institute of Technology, and DIT plays the role of a, it is an exemption, they are subsidized, they pay to the other institutions, they are simply a consumer in the moment, they don't contribute to the course pool. Uh, and the other universities, Technical University in Dresden, Germany, uh, Technical University in Vienna, Austria, Technical University Graz, Austria, and the two Slovenian universities, they uh, just contribute with lecturers, with academic staff, and deliver classes to <coughs> the program. So that's the simple framework. How do we deliver? Uh, we use a... Uh, e-learning platform, Adobe Connect Pro. Uh, it is my understanding that uh, the government of Slovenia, the government of Sweden, have decided that this is a tool that should be used nationwide. And as a matter of uh, pragmatism and simplicity, we also decided to get one license that also allows us, uh, in case one of the servers goes down, that the other institution uh, also can provide a license and we can easily switch over uh, even in a lecture so we have some kind of a backup position. Also for the lecturers and for the students it's easier to work uh, with one tool within one environment. And what you see here on the screenshot, uh, you have a list of students and uh, maybe what is important, uh, we encourage the students, strongly encourage the, the uh, full-time students, let's say, to join. Uh, to assemble in the classroom, and it's a similar layout like here, teacher camera, student camera, ceiling microphones, table microphones, so, so nothing special, I would say. But we also allow part-time students uh, to dial in from remote, and then uh, we also uh, request from the students that they do not just have their headset, but that they also run a camera, so that as lecturer I can have an, a face-to-face -face and an eye contact and I see if the student just left the living room or has the eye closed or if they are really awake and we also can uh, ask questions and they can ask questions. So the chat then is an instrument just in case uh, audio is interrupted or whatever so that students have a second, let's say, line to communicate. And here you have that small little button, the feedback button, so students can raise hands, uh, give a through an icon and advice, slow down, or can you repeat? There's a range of maybe approximately eight to ten icons, and these icons uh, are very helpful to, let's say, send feedback to the lecturer without interrupting the lecturer. So fortunately, we uh, got space uh, in the Western Gateway building. So this uh, offered us a, a good opportunity to, let's say, set up a, a room with much better acoustics than we used before in the civil engineering building with high ceilings and very poor acoustics. Uh, we got rid of these electronic whiteboards, so we now have a methodology that we can just project, for example, against the wall and for 
uh, some 100 euros we got this digital wireless digital pen so you can scribble against the wall against the white wall and you can uh, let's say imitate for what you needed before a, a digital whiteboard uh, the same functionality so you can interactively work with the material uh, we learned that it is very helpful to have really good audio so what you see here for the lecture we have the ceiling microphones so no technical setup any longer and for the students we provide these table microphones so that uh, the comments uh, all of the contributions from the students can be clearly captured Maybe this sounds a little boring, a floor plan of the zone we use in the Western Gateway building, but uh, online delivery is one thing, but we felt uh, that trust building, that a kickoff period with face-to-face uh, -face meetings, block seminars for one week in the beginning of the course are very important, and we also uh, intensively uh, practice a so-called project-based research-led teaching and what you see here is the uh, master student zone that I have just shown to you uh, is on the lower left of the floor plans and we have the uh, open office for our PhD students uh, with eight seats so it's very close co-location, uh, tutoring, mentoring uh, across multiple generations of students as possible and then we have a so-called collaboration and high performance computing lab and I will show you some snapshots of that and the uh, uh, closed offices, these are the offices of the so-called contract researchers, the post-doctoral uh, researchers, uh, myself and the course uh, coordinator. Delivery of material, uh, so uh, we use a Moodle portal, I think I saw it in, in many presentations and I unfortunately had no uh, chance to join but colleagues reported back that Moodle was also in the air in the morning sessions. So I don't have to talk in great detail about that. Uh, but it might be important just to maybe share some principles with you. So we have uh, on top of the course, uh, the just necessary information, who lectures. Uh, another principle in sharing these courses is, is that we have an agreement that seminars are usually delivered based on the material of one lecturer but delivered by support staff of the individual academic institution so that there is a, also a, a local contact point and then we have also a so-called liaison so if there is uh, problems with the equipment, uh, with the lecturing style, uh, problems uh, in understanding then there is a second staff member who is responsible to liaise with the other academic and uh, it's also a good opportunity for PhD students, for example, to liaise with an, another expert in the field through another vehicle and not just talk about the PhD itself, but about a broader context in that area. Then uh, what you also see here, traditional calendar, so to announce certain events, course events, to avoid overlaps with other courses. Uh, and then the traditional uh, distribution of material, whatever files uh, you can envisage, uh, but also two forums, uh, one for the students and uh, another one just for the teachers and the lecturers, so there is some level of engagement. And here on the top left you see just the links. In this case it's just a course delivered to UCC, but if it's delivered to multiple institutions, to the book of modules or whatever is the equivalent in the individual institution, so that the students from the institutions have a clear link to the, let's say, terms and definitions, how the course is graded uh, and evaluated in the individual academic institutions. In order to stimulate interaction uh, between students and project work, uh, the uh, Adobe Connect Pro also allows for application sharing and this means that we are not restricted only to PowerPoint or the Microsoft formats or whatever. So uh, you can uh, share, let's say, the screen of an application that you have open uh, on your desktop with other users. Uh, if you wish, you also can hand over the keyboard and the mouse signal. Uh, this is again just a PowerPoint snapshot that I produced this morning, as maybe some of us did, uh, but it also allows us 
for example, to share uh, engineering software, CAD systems, simulation software. Uh, I can do demonstrations with engineering software in the lectures, but the students also can share that. And I'm not sure if this is 100% uh, legal, but we think if we run a license in UCC and we just share the screen and the keyboard and the mouse and the students from the other institutions and have an opportunity to use that software that runs on our machine, it also a little bit, uh, let's say, allows us to be flexible with licensing of, of certain uh, engineering software which might be required to support the seminars. Uh, we are on the safe side, we don't do any commercial projects, it's just small examples, but it would be a nightmare if each institution would have to purchase these licenses for their classrooms. So another option, the, the collaboration labs that I've shown to you, uh, a piece of technology we are a little bit proud of is the so-called interactable, so it's a, a multi-touch screen uh, embedded in a, in, a, in a table so the students can uh, assemble around that and this is one an example of one of the student projects uh, the student developed and this is a, a, a mock-up uh, of an energy management or, or energy representation monitoring tool for UCC so the student got access to exemplarily data of selected buildings the ERI building is also used in our research projects and uh, I think this is a, a civil engineering building and then the students developed some kind of an, an application on these individual IT infrastructure uh, pieces. Achievements, some figures maybe. So uh, I started here in UCC uh, to introduce the course in 2006, 2007. To be honest, one week before the term started, I was not sure if the company could complete the installation of the technology, so I didn't do anything of, in terms of advertisement for the course. I was very shy, uh, but we, we brought it to, to all of the, uh, let's say, boards and committees. Uh, so I, had, I started with three students in the first year, three Erasmus students. Interestingly enough, we had three students from three different nations, Ireland, China, and Ukraine, and then we gradually developed. Uh, right now we have a stable enrollment between uh, 20 and 15 students. Um, that's what we have here in UCC. Uh, you see uh, the nationalities of the students. Uh, for two years we did some kind of a benchmark. Uh, we had one delegate of our students uh, embedded in a, a course at Stanford University that is called the, the interdisciplinary design experience running over two quarters in Stanford and teams from multiple US universities and universities of other uh, countries, Europe, Asia, assemble and work on a, uh, one design challenge that is uh, executed in multiple uh, climatic regions in different groups together with uh, experts from industry uh, we got a flavor of what is done in Stanford. Uh, don't take me wrong, I don't want to be arrogant, but we were very pleased with respect to the technology usage, for example, sharing uh, files and design documents. Uh, we felt we are up to speed. And uh, to be honest, Stanford also charged us a significant amount of money in compensation for the tuition. Uh, so we felt two years were enough. We learned some lessons and uh, then we progressed uh, without that embedded student. With respect to universities involved in lecturing and external lecturers, so you see that we uh, kept the number of external lecturers uh, nearly uh, constant, but uh, that we reduced the number of universities involved. Uh, this uh, reduced, let's say, the management effort, but also gives us an opportunity that we have, uh, let's say, backup lecturing uh, human resources also in the other institutions. With respect to students, so since 2005-06, uh, uh, we had uh, 60 students enrolled including the current academic year and, of course, 45 students now have graduated. So that's it. 
and I thank you for your attention. <laughs>